Data handling is when you gather, record and present information in a way that is easy for people to understand. It is important for us to learn how to understand and explain what you think about data that has been given to you. It's also important that you know how to show information that you found out. We use lots of graphs and charts to interpret data. What is this one called? It's a tally chart. We use tally charts to quickly note down information. So you just draw little lines like this and we call that the five gate method. And as you can see, each one line means one and then you put a cross through it when you get, fat, get to five so it does look like a gate. What's this one called? It's called a pie chart. A pie chart is a graph that is presented in a circular graph and the slices indicate how much of something you are trying to show. So the bigger the slice of the pie, the more of something there will be. And what is this one called? This one is called a bar chart and the tally chart helps us build the pie chart and a bar chart. A bar chart is similar to a pie chart, but it's obviously a different shape. It's, the data is shown in bars going upwards. Let's try interpreting some data. Look at this bar chart and think about the questions that I ask. What information or data is this chart sharing with us? Which features tell you this? So you can see that the title is favorite color um, at the top there. And on the left hand side, there's a label saying children. So we imagine that this bar chart is telling us uh, that some children have been asked their favorite color and this bar chart is showing us how many picked each color. What do the bars do? Well, the bars indicate how much of something there has been. So in this case, the size of the bar chart indicates how many children chose a certain color. What do you notice about the numbers? So on the left hand side, there are numbers going upwards and this shows us the number of children that I've chosen and it's going up in twos, isn't it? How many children's favorite color is red? You need to look at the red bar. And the, if you look at the top of the bar, it's in line with the number eight. So it tells us that eight children have chosen the color red as their favorite. How many children's favorite color is pink? Look at the pink bar, go to the top of the pink bar, and it is in line, if you follow it along from the top to the numbers, it is in line with six. So there are six children that picked pink. How many children's favorite color is green? Well, like before, we go to the top of the bar, we go along to here, to the numbers, and you can see that it's directly between four and six. So what is the number between four and six on a number line? It is four, five, six, five. So there's five children that chose green. What is the most popular color? How many children chose it? So you have to look at the bar chart and you can see that the yellow bar is the tallest. You'll get questions like this sometimes, which ask you to think in a different way. So it's in between eight and 10, like previously. So the number between eight and 10 is nine. So nine children chose yellow. Let's try another one. Look at this pie chart and think about the questions I ask. What information or data is this chart sharing with us, which features tell you this so we've got a title like before how do you get to school and then down the right hand side you've got lots of different ways of getting to school so we assume that this pie chart uh, some people have been asked how do you get to school and there's been different options for them to choose from what do the slices of the pie do well 
the slices of the pie tell us how much of something there has been chosen and some of them are bigger some of them are smaller so it's quite easy to see pick out which one is the most popular or which one was the least popular in this case what do you notice about the colors well the colors match the colors in the key there so blue is walking red is car green is bus how many children walk to school well looking at walking there it is dark blue find the dark blue pie slice and we can see that there's an eight there so eight children picked walking what is the least popular way to get to school well look for the smallest slice here the smallest slice is the one so one looking at light blue light blue means train so the least popular way to get to school is the train what does the orange slice of the pie tell us well it tells us that it's orange so we look at the orange and it meets so with taxi, so three children chose taxi as their way to get to school. Finally, what is the total number of children who get to school in a mode of transport with an engine? It's quite a long question. It's something that you'd have to think about. So car, bus, train, taxi. Car is nine. Bus is four, train is uh, one, and taxi is orange. So nine add four is 13, 13 add one is 14, 14 add three is 17. So 17 people go to school in a vehicle with an engine. Let's try one more. Look at the pictures and help me source out some data using a tally. We've been given a big box of fruit and veg, lovely, but we need to sort it out into separate boxes. Let's count them just in case we lose any. How many carrots are there? When, while we count the carrots, we're going to complete a tally to keep track. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven carrots in total. How many apples? One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine apples. Strawberries this time. One, two, three, four, five. And pumpkins. Well, I think they're pumpkins, they could be peppers. Five, six, seven. Seven pumpkins as well. So as you can see, we've got a four lines and then the one across to make our gate. We use tally charts as a rough first count. Next, we need to make the data easier for others to read. We are going to now make a bar chart up from this information. Let's build our bar chart. We would usually do this on squared paper. Number one is the axis. These are the two lines, vertical and horizontal, that make the frame of our chart. Next up is numbers. The largest number of fruit is nine. It is always nice to round to the closest even numbers. So we will make our graph start at zero and end at 10. Here, at the top. We could go up in ones or twos. We'll go in up in twos like the bar chart we looked at before. The numbers must line up with the horizontal lines here. So two. And again here, four, six, and eight. So we're exactly on the lines. Labels. It is important to label bar charts, otherwise nobody will know what the numbers or bars mean. First, we need to add in the fruit labels underneath the horizontal line. We call this the x-axis. We'll keep the tally chart there to keep a track of what we're doing. So. We've got carrots, apples, strawberries, and pumpkins. Can you see that I've added the labels in between the border lines? This is so we have a larger area to make our bars nice and clear. You could make your columns a bit longer to write your labels horizontally, but I haven't got enough room here, unfortunately. 
Okay, so moving on, we've got to label the, the vertical line, which is called the y-axis. It needs to tell people very clearly what the numbers mean in a word or two. Really simple. So let's do ours here. Let's go for pieces of fruit and veg. Simple. Finally, what are we missing before adding in our bars? A title up here. So let's add one in. It needs to be super simple and straight to the point. Amount of fruit in our box. There we go. So next, we are ready to add in our bars. To show the information we have found, let's get our tally chart data back. By carefully counting the tally again, let's start adding in our bars. Remember, keep the bars in the columns we talked about before and draw all lines on the line of your squared paper if you have it. It's really important to draw on the lines and make it really neat. It's much easier to understand then. Here we are. We went up in twos up the y-axis, so make sure if you have an odd number, it lines up exactly between its nearest two even numbers. So here, we've got a seven, so it's right between six and eight there. Let's keep adding in our bars to show the data we learnt about the fruit in our box. Apples, strawberries five, and pumpkins seven. So again, we're always in those middle of the even numbers, aren't we, with this one? Woohoo! We have created our bar chart. Let's make our bar chart more attractive. Ooh, much nicer. Let's just recap the features you must include on your bar chart. Horizontal and vertical lines, or the x-axis and the y-axis. Numbers down the side to show how much or how many. Simple labels. A simple title. and lovely straight lines and clear and colourful bars to finish off. Now, using what you have learnt, I want you to complete the activity on Seesaw by drawing your own bar chart. There are mild, spicy and hot versions of data. Then, there are further questions on another activity if you wish. Good luck!